Hello, my name is Barry Good. I'm from the London School of Business and Finance. And today we're going to talk about implementation. This is lesson eight of the Strategic Planning MBA module. So building from the last lecture, which was about change, this is focusing on the actual implementation of change plans. The outcomes of this module are the identification of the case for change, galvanizing the workforce to embrace the change, identification of the benefits for the individual, team and the organization. So we're going to start by talking about developing the change strategy. This is all about understanding why change is necessary within the organization and defining a transferable strategy for implementation. This section really is about understanding the vision and the value of change and developing a change plan. In order for this to be fully effective, it's important that leadership is aligned around the need for change. Getting your senior management team to understand the necessity, to embrace the change process and to endorse it through their collective departments is the requirement that's necessary in order for change to be effectively implemented across an organisation. It's also important that the change programme effectively supports the vision and the strategy and that there's a case for action that's been fully embraced by those who are affected. Change management has to be tailored to the organisation. Some organisations have different um, methods of operation, different products and services, and different markets. And not all change processes can be applied to every organisation. So it's important to understand the external market and the, ex and the internal market to ensure that change can be effectively delivered and is appropriate for the situation. So what happens next in terms of implementation? First of all is to understand that change has to be driven from top down. So getting a change management team together who understand the necessity for change and how to implement it effectively is critical to change and implementation success. Setting up an organisational structure to manage, carry out and monitor the change effort and recruit the people necessary is also fundamental. Ultimately, change can only be delivered if there's an effective implementation plan. So what gets contained within the plan? First of all, there has to be clear deliverables. A clear structure in place with clear roles and responsibilities. And there has to be transformational team focus ensuring that the right people are employed at the right time in the change process. And so key timing and project plans are an essential necessity to implementation. How do you know when you're ready for change? Ultimately, the change team and those effective, ultimately the change team and those affected should be able to answer the following questions and be able to say, we know what we need to do, we know what's expected of us, we have the capability to embrace the change, and we have the resolve to keep going and drive the change through. So implementation gets undertaken primarily at two different levels. There's the transformational leadership team. This team um, takes a helicopter view of the organisation and how well the change process is going. Ultimately, it's their job to holistically review the achievements of individual change managers, to set the priorities and to review the solutions, to take decisions if there are obstacles or blockers to change, to supply the, the resources necessary to implement change, whether it be training, whether it be tools, whether it be equipment, etc., etc. Operational teams are the, those who are on the ground floor who are required to deliver um, the implementation. So operational, uh, leadership, so the operational leadership team is responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the program to ensure that the program gets delivered and to manage the benefits of the case. Now, ultimately, if there are difficulties in, 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 in the implementation, it's the operational leadership team that identifies what those difficulties are and works with the transformational team in order to resolve them. 
So there's, there's two, suspect, two perspect, perspectives that get looked at here. Firstly is the transformational leadership team, which takes a holistic view. And there's the operational leadership team, whose responsibility is the day-to-day -day delivery. The transformation leadership team drives the trans transformation program. The functional focus team is responsible for the implementation and, and support. They also manage the um, stream deliverables and the benefits for delivery. So the functional focus team sits on the periphery and provides the uh, leadership team and the operations team with any um, tools, equipment or resources that they might need. So we can look at the functional focus team as a lubricant to the change management and implementation process. Obviously, results are dependent on the smooth integration between all of the teams working collectively. Change can be viewed through three lenses simultaneously. There's a rational approach to change, there's a political approach to change, and also an emotional uh, approach to change. Fundamentally, it's important to have all three aspects identified and um, any obstacles that sit within them resolved and diffused. Often, change fails because there's a lack of buy-in, there's a lack of willingness to change, or there's um, an emotional barrier that prevents individuals from following the direction of the leaders above them. So it's important that people are um, fully briefed, that they're on board with the change process and the rationale behind it, and that they're properly supported throughout the implementation stages. People will resist change in many different ways. Avoidance exception, rationalisation, intellectualising, compliance, passive resistance, delay and attack. These are all ways in which change can get, can get resisted. So let's look at each one of these very briefly. Avoidance is where people just don't want to embark on the change. Change is uncomfortable, they like doing things the way they already are and they, they don't want to. So the types of excuses might be, we've just started on a new change initiative, we don't want to um, take part in another one, thank you. Exception is where individuals can come up with excuses um, which are um, outside of the norm. That may be true in 90% of the cases, but. So the exception is a but to the norm. Rationalisation is where um, people refer to previous experience and say, that doesn't work, we tried it before and this was the outcome. Intellectualising is where you add complexity to an argument to prevent, to prevent a clear case being defined. Compliance is where you agree in, in, in principle with the change but actually don't fully embrace it. So effectively all you're saying is yes, I agree to the change but, the, but you don't actually um, fully endorse the, the, the change rationale. Passive resistance is basically saying um, I abstain from the change process. It's refusing to get involved um, and the obstacle being if I don't say anything then nothing will change and it won't, it won't affect me. Delay is a stalling tactic and attack is just simply saying no, being, being um, resistant to the, uh, the argument or the necessity for change in the first place. So successful transformation um, depends on multiple factors. Understanding the reasons why change is necessary, presenting a clear argument for change, making sure that those who are affected by the change process understand how and why, that they're fully embraced and supported during the change process, that they're giving any training, any support, any counselling, any coaching that might be required, that people work as a group collectively if a, if a division or a department is affected, and that there's momentum that gets sustained throughout the change process. It's important that once something gets started, often it's too late to go back and put things to how they were before. Once change processes are executed and begin, it's important that there's critical mass and momentum um, as part of that process to enable the, the full change cycle to be achieved. Obviously, if, if problems arise during the change process, they have to be encountered and dealt with. Any obstacles, any blockers to success also needs to be managed. So why does change fail? Change fails for a variety of different reasons. First and foremost, there can be a lack or a sense of urgency. Without motivation, 
to improve, no one will change. And change is time sensitive. Often, um, time, uh, often change needs to be implemented quickly because markets evolve and change very quickly um, in modern societies. So there has to be a sense of urgency to drive the change process through. Change that takes too long loses momentum. Secondly, failure to create sufficiently broad guiding coalition. A sufficient number of senior people both inside and outside the organisation is required to make a change effort succeed. Leadership is essential in change management because leaders inspire those who are affected. So if there isn't sufficient support for the change process at the top, fundamentally the change is going to fail because it's not, probably, uh, it's not properly endorsed. No clear image of, su of success or no clear business case. This is where um, the leadership must be able to express its intention um, and win the hearts and minds of people quickly. This picture must include and go beyond numbers and targets. So this is about creating a clear vision for the future or a clear vision of success, which everybody can see and understand and embrace. So if there isn't a clear um, end state, if there isn't a clear objective to be achieved, then it's very difficult for people to buy into that and feel motivated. Under communicating. During the change process, it's important to keep re-emphasising re the the benefits of change and reinforcing the change process. People need to know what's going on and they need to be clear about any problems that are coming their way so that they can adapt to them. So it's important that there's a two-way communication process, both from senior management down and from the shop floor upwards, and that the channel remains open to deal with any um, uncertainty or any objections. Allowing obstacles to get in the way. In short, an obstacle can, can, can come from anywhere and, and can, can very quickly destroy momentum. So it's important that any obstacles that prevent change are identified and dealt with. Celebrating success too early. If we celebrate um, too early without the full change process being implemented, we don't ever get to the end state. So it's important to um, be sure that there's clear evidence that change has been achieved and the end state's been achieved also. Not having a proper plan, no roadmap that starts with the end in mind is also another reason why change fails. And failing to create short-term wins. People not able to climb um, the cliff face of implementation because there's not enough motivation and not enough reward for them during the process. My name's Barry Good. This is Lesson 8 in Implementation as part of the Strategic Planning MBA module.